Hi, I'm Corey, and I have too many tapes. Sometimes, when sifting through my enormous U-Haul box of tapes I've collected through the years... It's not hoarding if I make a YouTube show about it. I'll find one so strangely sublime, so viscerally off-putting, that I feel the need to show it to my friends. Because apparently I'm that kind of person. This one, though? With this one, I had to create a whole YouTube channel so I could show it to everybody. Because apparently I'm that kind of person as well. Anyway, this is 1986's The Filling Station. Or God's Filling Station, or Bible Truths for Children, like it says on the box. It's had a lot of names. It's a sort of mashup of The Electric Company and Schoolhouse Rock and Sesame Street, but so, so Christian. There's something so inherently fascinating about the combination of deeply conservative Christian values, a television camera, and next to no budget. It's a thick, meaty stew of conviction, uncomfortable earnestness paired with good old-fashioned American capitalism, puppets, always puppets for some reason, and just deep incompetence. At their best, these sort of videos are like tofu dogs. You eat them, they kind of taste like the real thing, and you don't really notice the nutritional value of them. At their worst, well, let's get started, shall we? We start with a catchy little number over some admittedly pretty decent 70s era animation. Oh my god, what were those? We'll, um... We'll come back to those. Seriously, this song has been stuck in my head for the last week. There's no ground on the station. There's no to the station. Get you out of cosplay. Hi. Oh. Hi, I guess it's time for today. Stanley Spadowski's Clubhouse. I there's an umbrella around here. Just so you all know, this is the ideal male body. Here, you may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. Some shield from the rain this would be. Pornstash wants to talk to us about using faith as a shield, but I can't stop looking at his smile. He stares at me the way I imagined a tiger would stare at me right before he pounced and ate me alive. The animation in this show is all over the place. They spent all their money on that rad car and those other characters. These guys are fine, though. A little sketchy, but they have that kind of schoolhouse rock vibe I was talking about earlier. Speaking of sketchy, this show is all about the sketch format. This week's variation on a theme? Faith. Here it is. The Bible talks about the shield of faith that comes from hearing the Word of God, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You'll never have to be without the shield and sword. This makes me feel unsafe. I need an adult. Not that one, though. A different adult. At night. Indoors. What follows is the greatest cinematic achievement in the history of the moving image. It is presented in its entirety and without commercial interruption. And now, a bedtime story. Tonight, I'm not going to think about that green, hairy monster. I just thought about it. The more I try to forget what I don't want to think of, I already thought of it. I know. I'll think about Jesus. Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear. Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear. Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear. Jesus is my hiding place. Go away! I belong to Jesus. Can someone find me that monster suit? It may be the only way I can self-actualize. Next up on this wild ride of tiny little nightmares, we have the good old-fashioned Christian morality play standby, Shoulder Angel vs. Shoulder Devil. What huge moral issue are we going to tackle today? Faith in the very existence of God himself? Oh no! My reading book! I left it at school! If I don't do no. My uh, left her book at school. Left her book at school. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask him to make it possible for you to get your book, so you can- Apparently the answer to all of life's problems is to pray super hard about them. Thank you for caring about So hard that you almost seem life. condescending, Please Mindy. Look, I've watched a few episodes of this, and Mindy is in about 90% of them, and she is always exactly like this. She is the avatar of sass, and she is my new god. 
the next day on Action 5 News at 5. The struggle is real. The department store clothing aisle music is really hammering home the anxiety and dread she must be feeling right now. Oh, just... You leave Mindy alone, evil Mindy. Try again later. Good Mindy convinces best Mindy to try again later, and now we're introduced to the most troubling character of this piece. Watch this carefully. It's the superintendent! Hello! Hi, I left my reading book in room 13. I need it. Can I get in my classroom? Well, I tell you, I'm not really usually here on weekends. I just happen to be here today because my son is home from college and we're playing some basketball and... I'm not normally at this school, but, well, let's, I have a key and it may fit the room, so come on in, let's try it. Thank you. The superintendent is deeply suspicious. I need to break this down real quick. His son is home from college. They're playing basketball at a middle school he generally doesn't go to. Look, I don't want to make any wild accusations or anything, but all I'm saying is if we can't produce the boy, we can't trust the man. No boy, no trust. You watch out, Mindy. He had the right key. And then Oh joy! The she has the book. Rejoice. Our long national nightmare is over. Dear Jesus, thank you for caring about everything in my whole life. Literally every single thing. Mindy is Jesus' favorite teen. Jesus prays to Mindy. All hail Mindy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I wouldn't have said anything discouraging if I would have known that the superintendent's son would be home this weekend and want to play basketball in my school and that the superintendent would have his keys to my room. I just didn't know. Why would you expect to know that? Why would anyone expect you to know that? If you had known that, you'd be a precog, and that is witchcraft, evil Mindy. The structure of this show is all over the place, so there's more brain-searing horror to come. Ah, two dads, time two Christmases. You have a conversation with yourself. Wait, no. Your face Clever editing trickery. God can solve your problems in ways you've never dreamed of. Gas Dad really wants us to know that God is going to take care of absolutely everything. Right. But watching this really makes me feel like this is the last television show. Like there's been some sort of horrible nuclear hellfire, and the government's trying to keep us inside so that we aren't ravaged by the horrible nuclear mole men that are outside of our doors. It's comforting in that you're definitely going to die screaming sort of way. So far in this loosely connected series of vignettes, all that we really have to tie us together are Mindy and Gas Station Dad. It's sort of an angel devil situation again, and if I have to choose between the two, I'm going with Mindy every time. And would you look at that? More Mindy. People who didn't know what it means to give up. Mindy is teaching the youth of our nation now. The cult of Mindy grows. They didn't know the meaning of the word despair. And do you know why? Because they didn't have a good dictionary. Because they didn't have a good dictionary? Well, I've officially sunk to this show's level. There's no saving me now. No, because they knew that hurts can be hurdles. You don't learn the meaning of the word hurdles from a dictionary. You learn from experience. You see... I take back everything I said about this animation. Somebody made this in three hours on whatever the evangelical equivalent of cocaine is. Cocaine, I guess, but you pray super hard for forgiveness about it. Okay, there are, let me check my notes here, 17? 17 segments in this 24 minute tape? Let's be real, they aren't all gonna be gold. So it's time for a lightning round. Thumb comes to life. He is thumping special. That's not a pun I came up with as a joke, that's just the actual name of the character. Next. We hope you'll all pray for the feeling. Gas Dad is now asking us to watch the show and tell our friends about it. I'm doing that, Gas Dad. Next. Our Lord and Savior Mindy is wearing antennae now. That's nice, I guess. I can get down with that. The animated Chick Track Bees, though? I'm gonna be honest, this segment is way too long for what it is. Next. Live action dads on the move! They are way too proud about that slogan on that van. At long last, we've arrived at the single Bible verse this show is managing to ring 25 minutes out of. And to paraphrase Weird Al, this verse is just six words long. The just shall live by faith. Romans 1, 17. The just shall live by faith. I guess the show has worked. 
because I've watched it uh, countless numbers of times now, and that verse is now burned into my skull. I'm Schaefer. I'm Parker. Alvin? Alvin? Alvin! Did we have to anthropomorphize pens? Was that 100% necessary? This segment seems to try to make memorizing the verse fun, but I think it might be memorization by trauma. You will never forget the pen children as long as you live. What is their ink? Why does it flow so easily? There seems to be some ink blots on the page. Those aren't just any ink blots. They're the filling station's favorite vocalists. Ink blots on the page? That can only lead to... Yep, here it comes. Oh god. Oh no, this can't be happening. The Ink Blots are a doo-wop R&B group, and they... I mean, it's the Ink Spots, right? This is some moderately to severely tone-deaf or racist take on the Ink Spots. The sooner we can get away from this, the better. What do you have next for me, filling station? Oh, animated bears, that's sweet! Wait, no, just more nightmares. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. I will have no fear, Jesus is my hiding place. That's better. That's better. A human being wrote this. Several human beings wrote this. It went into production. They bought makeup and costumes. It went into post-production. Someone edited this. That got put onto terrestrial television. Human eyeballs saw this. And then, rightfully so, it got locked away like the Ark of the Covenant on magnetic tape on some thrift store shelf. And there it sat, safe. And then I stumbled upon it. And then I put it into my VCR and then I saw it with my human eyeballs. And then I forced you to watch it with your eyeballs. My crime is hubris, and for that I am deeply, deeply sorry. Forgive me, Mindy. Also, one last note, don't get those bear costumes near the fire. That's just going to be polyester melted to human flesh. Love works. One day, a leper came running toward Jesus. We can be sure that bystanders shouted, Unclean! Unclean! Ah, just what we needed. Limited animation. It really feels like they blew their animation budget like four segments ago, and now the animator's like, look, I can only give you two frames a second. If you can't take two frames a second, I got nothing for you. So it looks like Jesus is here to impart an important life lesson, or is that... No, it's... That there can't be. Is that Alan Rickman from Die Hard? Is that Hans Gruber? Everyone else was afraid to even be near a leper, let alone touch one. But Jesus was unafraid, and he loved that poor, sick man. Wait, Later, when this Jesus was, the, passed through this was Samaria, before Die Hard. He this predicted Hans Gruber. This thing really is they prophetic. This whole video makes me feel... Unclean! Unclean! Yeah, something like that. Jesus notices whether we remember to say thank you, too. Thank you, Jesus, for my mommy. Thank you, Jesus, for my baby brother. Thank you, Mindy, for finding your reading book and keeping your student helper job and showing us the way. Thank you, Jesus, for everybody. Gas Dad is here to bring us home. Goodbye, Gas Dad. I'll always remember our time together. And I'll never forget your luxurious mullet, your mustache sourced from the finest in 1980s pornography, your exquisite trucker hat, or that smile. That... that smile. Anyway, that was a little taste of the filling station. And looking at this VHS cover, I can actually tell that this is the wrong sleeve for this. That can happen when you buy thrift store tapes, but you know what that means, right? That means there are more of these. And we're not gonna watch them because I care about you and your well-being. That being said, we are kind of like co-conspirators now. I feel like I've committed a crime. I feel like I forced you to commit a crime. We are crime now, we've crimed. And I'm sorry for that, I guess. Thanks for watching. I plan on making more of these, so please like, comment, and subscribe, and 
I will probably read all of your comments and obsess over them because I'm unhealthy. And I'm also going to set up a Patreon. Uh, I have a very, very bad tape habit I need to keep funding, so if you want to throw me a couple bucks that way, I will be releasing some tiers where we can maybe talk about uh, the tapes that are coming up, and maybe you can choose from various tapes that I could do, and just generally ask me questions and chat with me, and maybe we'll do some streams or something, I don't know. We'll figure this out later. This is my first video. Give me some slack. Now go away! I belong to Jesus!